welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, for your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of June 11th. Now, we've already had an Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week. But, of course, this is Showcase Week. Lots going on. So much to cover. So, of course, this week is special. We get two Easy Achievers Gaming Podcasts for this week. Of course, one that is already live currently you can go over and check out right now on the YouTube channel. It is, of course, the breakdown of the Summer Games Fest. My thoughts on the showcase in general. And what I thought about it. And this episode, you already know, is the Xbox Showcase Breakdown. Very excited to talk about this because it was actually very good. We're going to jump into it. Of course, this isn't a regular schedule, so we're just going to talk about the showcase. You, me. And remember, this is an open dialogue. Tweet at me. If you'd like to discuss anything about this show. And of course, comment down below. I answer every single comment. And remember... You know what YouTube is. You know what these podcast services are. Five-star review. Like, comment, subscribe. Share with a friend. Now let's get into the show. I'm going to give like a first thoughts. And then we're going to actually get in beat for beat. Each part of the show. This was great. I think this was actually fantastic. I actually think this is about as close to a perfect showcase as something can get. This, I think, is really up there with the echelon of something like 2016 PlayStation Showcase. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe 2018 as well was a great year for showcases. I might be a year off there. It might have been 2017. But needless to say, this actually competes with something that is akin to a first, major first party. Hmm. No, you know what? Let's clean this up. This at least makes sense from someone equal to Microsoft's weight and talent for the industry, or at least the talent that they have with them. They have at least an equal footing with what they are showing us. We've sat here for so, so, so long and discussed Xbox is on the back foot pretty much since 2013. They had an incredibly strong 360 era. We immediately go into the Xbox One era. Completely decimated by PlayStation. Rumored sold 2-1. to one, Probably more than that. They continue this kind of meddling affair going into the Xbox Series S and X generation that we find ourselves in now. And they have yet to really set their foot down in this industry. And really make it known that they are here to play ball. Now... I know you're at home saying like, well, of course they're if they're keeping up in these things and in releasing at least services and and at least they're keeping up with services, i.e. Game Pass, with their continual updates with that. And and although I would agree, it still lacks in major reasons to come to your platform. Even though I think they actually do a lot of things better, they have better online connections. I feel like the multiplayer experience is usually somewhat better, although PlayStation has pretty much closed the divide in most part there. Xbox is clearly third place. This is something Phil Spencer himself said on an interview, of course. We all saw that crazed interview. It was great to, from our perspective, probably bad for Xbox, but I think we finally saw a showcase that was worth the name Xbox on it. It was good. It brought meat it's been a while since I think anyone can really say that Xbox did something incredibly great. And here we are. They did a great showcase. Phenomenal, actually. I think I think this is probably the best showcase they have ever done. By probably a lot. And I'm happy to see it as, of course, an Xbox fan. But someone that has constantly said, next year, next year. Now, that is the point I'm getting to right now. Although this was great. Although this was fantastic. I'm grading this showcase kind of removed from the outer space, kind of grading it in a vacuum. What was the content? Was it good? But once you enter in everything outside of it, the greater Xbox ecosystem, it becomes a bit muddy. The reason is, as an Xbox fan, and I'm saying it as one right now, we find ourselves yet again yet again saying 
next year. How many times have we said that? I think I've said it a million times. I think I've said that every year since 2013, maybe 2015, who knows. But we're finding ourselves, everything's going to turn around next year. And yet again, what do we find? We are going to be much better next year. And that, my friends, is sad. <laughs> we still don't have concrete backbone support for this year. So we have, we're pretty much going a, close to a decade without a solid Xbox year that really, really feels great. I know we can argue the year Gears 5 came out was okay, Forza Horizon, but, th but you have to argue it isn't without a doubt something you can point to and say, yes, that was a great year for your Xbox. Every, everything else with PlayStation, that they have constant things you can point to. You can point to Ratchet and Clank. You can point to Demon Souls. You can point to God of War, both 2018 and Ragnarok. You can point to Bloodborne in the PS4 generation. You can point to really, really many titles. A lot of them launching in the same, same, same year. And that really shows their strength in the games generation. And all they did was deliver games. They didn't need Game Pass. And we find ourselves sitting here like, thank God. It looks like it's finally going to happen. Next year is going to be good. But it doesn't, or at least it doesn't feel as good without the context of, of course, we are finding ourselves in, it's going to be next year. I don't want to middle the point. Let's go into the show and talk beat for beat. And then we'll get more into it at the end of the show, of course. Um... Yeah, you know what? Yes, we're going to talk more about it at the end of the show. I wanted to get into my games of the show. Let's let's I'll say it throughout and then I'll have a full list at the end. They open very strongly. Fable. Of course, Playground Games is making this. No firm release date. And I got to say, I was worried, of course, Playground Games not really known for anything other than Forza Horizon. And we're seeing them at least on the surface, making a Fable game. The humor was there. The very British-like humor was there. The kind of like delivering the line, but also serious at delivering the line. So it's like humorous, but very straight, which is very funny. And I liked it. It gave me hope. Now, again, I saw a lot of people saying this. Oh, it was in-engine, so it's okay. But... We still didn't see what the gameplay looked like. What does the game look like? Of course, we know what Fable looks like, but I want to know what does Playground Games Fable look like? Because it's not going to be the same thing. It can't be. Lionhead's gone. So what does it look like? So I'm still left with questions, but I am much happier seeing this than prior. Compulsion Games. This was rumored. This was a report actually by Windows Central. And it was true. It was called Project Midnight and it actually kept some of that name. South of Midnight. It looks very good. It's exactly as described. Deep South. I don't remember if it specifically said Cthulhu horror, but it has that kind of horror aspect. I was actually pointing out by my wife as I was watching it. Um, the character with very cool kind of powers and it looks almost clay animation like uh, the character was looking for a sea monster that's actually known for that region. Oh, sorry, hold on. I'm making sure. Okay, no, nothing crazy is happening. They're known for that region. Um, What was it called? It was like uh, Akalahaha or something like that. And I love it. It's pretty much like the Sea Monster of the South. Or, sorry, Loch Ness Monster of the South. It looks great. Again, what's the game look like? I, we're going to say that a couple times throughout this. What does the game look like? We don't know. But... I have hope. Compulsion Games made We Happy Few. I, I am reminded of an article that was reported on, I believe it was IGN a year or two ago, that the game director, I believe, uh, said that the next game after We Happy Few will be much better. Pretty much stating, like, if it is not much better than We Happy Few, then I'm not doing my job, right? Which is which is funny to see, but also rare to see someone being so, like, so candid. Like, if it's not, if my next game isn't better than this, then I'm not doing my job, which... Actually, pretty nice to see, especially from Xbox. Uh, as we know, they uh, have messed up some things. Massive Entertainment is coming up next.
They showed off their Star Wars game. Star Wars Outlaws. This is going to be 2024. There's going to be more at the Ubisoft Forward. That's tomorrow, I believe, at 1 p.m. Eastern. Let's double check on that. Because I don't want to give you guys false. This is 1 p.m. Eastern. I was correct. 10 a.m. Pacific, of course. 6 p.m. BST. If you're in the UK. No gameplay. But it's a Ubisoft game. I think we can color in what this game is going to look like. It looks very cool. Very, very Outlaws-ish. It looks very... You are a Han Solo-esque character seemingly freeing this world from the Syndicate's control, which I believe Syndicate's like a mafia cartel-ish group. I think they have a hut as well. I don't know if that's true, but... I think we I think we all know what this game is. If you want to see more, you can tune into the Ubisoft Direct tomorrow, and they'll do a full gameplay walkthrough, apparently. I have high hopes. This looks great. I know a lot of people have the Star Wars fatigue for obvious reasons, but... I'm liking what it looks like. I, I appreciate it. I'm happy. I will I will definitely pick this up if the gameplay holds suffice. I love my Ubisoft games, although they could be kind of contrite. Something like Far Cry 6 I gave a lot of flack for because it just felt... It, it really did feel like I just played Far Cry again, which you know is not bad, but not great either, right? Next up, we have Thunder Lotus' 33 Immortals. This is coming to 20... This is coming, sorry, in 2024. And it's coming to Game Pass. Many of these games are Game Pass, by the way. I'm, I'm going to... I wrote some of them down. I believe I caught every game that was coming in Game Pass, but I'm also going to read a sheet at the bottom that has every game for Game Pass, just in case I miss any. 33-player co-op. This is interesting. It has that very Hades-like camera angle. I'm sure it evoked Hades for a lot of people. But it looks like that you can have straight up 33 people. Obviously, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of scaling coming to effect in this game. And the art style is actually really good. It does seem a little plain, but I think it almost it elevates how the game looks because it is so plain. Sometimes less and more, and I think that is actually the case with this one. It looks very, very good. I'm excited to try this out, although I don't have 32 other people that I'm going to play this with. It looks like a fun thing I can maybe grab a buddy or two to jump in on. And of course, it's on Game Pass. Excuse me. Payday 3. September 31st. It's coming to Game Pass. I don't have much to say to this. This is Payday. If you like Payday, you'll like Payday 3. If you don't like Payday, I don't think they're going to do anything to change your mind. Uh, gameplay, you actually got to see like what the game looked like. It looks cool. I, I like the. It's one of those things where I like the idea, of course, of Payday 2 and 3. But actual execution, I'm, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good. But it looks very fun. And I'm happy for all the Payday 3. When I was working at GameStop, I sold that game all the time. All of the time. Persona 3 Reload, of course, by Atlas. We knew about this. This was leaked, of course, by the Instagram page of Atlas accidentally uh, yesterday. Um, I'll be curious. I, I don't remember what time it was, but I'm curious if it was like in Japan time and maybe they were off. I don't know if that could even happen, but that'd be funny if that if that was the reason. Uh, it's coming early 2024. Also, of course, to Game Pass. A couple of things we've learned uh, following the game's announcement. They came out and said that they are remaking Persona 3. And although at home you're like, of course they are. But we mean that quite literally. They will not be bringing over anything from any other version of Persona 3. So not the uh, P3P version that came on the PSP. And not the, um, what was it called? Oh, I think it's like, uh, it starts with an M. Oh, I'm already blanking on what it was. But there were two versions pretty much of Persona 3. One that adds like a, a female uh, character that you could play as and... None of that's going to be here. This is straight up just a full re-income of the base game. I find that quite strange. Why aren't you adding the other content? Is it that hard? Is there some sort of weird coding issue or something? that, you, Or maybe you can't find the original data, so you'd have to remake it or something? What, what's going on? And it's strange that they're not giving a reason. All they said was it's not going to be included in the game. Can't you give us a reason? Are you going to try and sell this as DLC later? I find that hard to believe, right? Maybe they will. Maybe it will be like a Persona 3 reload did or something and it's just uh, it, again who knows but i did want to bring that up that this is missing lots of things that people are like i don't care because i've never played the other versions this is my first time i'm going to be playing persona 3 i played persona 4 golden and persona 5 royale and i love those games i've actually played both of them twice and this is i'm sure a backbreaker to many persona 3 fans like hardcore fans uh i'm sorry that this has happened but Maybe there's a good reason. I can't imagine what it would be, though. 
Obsidian is up next, and uh, I did not think we'd get it so early in the show. We see Avowed. Of course, this is also coming in Game Pass. This is slated for next year, 2024. I gotta say, I said it on Twitter. If you follow me at EVM and Thousand, I gotta say it here as well. This did not look as good as I thought it would. And this kind of stirred up a hubbub online. I was kind of shocked about how many people who was kind of defending this game. I want to be clear. I love Obsidian. I love what the games they've worked on, of course, with Fallout New Vegas. And I love Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds is one of my uh, favorite games in the, last, in the last decade. It is a great game. But that does not excuse how bad it looks. This does not look very good at all. <laughs> if it doesn't look good in the trailer, what is the base game going to look like? Because I, ima I imagine that could have been running on a PC to make it even a little bit better. Maybe it wasn't. I missed disclaimers if it did. So I apologize if I missed something. But to me, this did not look good. Now, I did see Gene Park tweet out. And someone I respect, his opinion is something I respect very highly. But... He said a couple things. He said people who are saying the graphics in Avowed look bad are underselling it pretty much. Saying we don't uh, many fans don't care about the graphics and although I agree gameplay's top all of importance, right? Nothing is more important than how the game feels. But it doesn't excuse what it looks like. Outer Worlds to me at least at a glance looks better than this. So why does it look so bad? And also, why does it kind of look like Skyrim Light? It kind of looks like, oh, we made Skyrim. And it almost looks as bad as Skyrim looked 10 years ago. And I know a lot of my mind is coloring with the nostalgia, rose-colored glasses. I'm sure if I went back, I would completely disagree. And I'm sure I would, especially if you remove the remasters and you just go back to the base 360. I'm not saying this looks like a 360 game, but it, it does not look like a PS5 game. And it does not look like an Xbox Series X game at all. I completely disagree with many people I actually got into with one of my friends from Podcast PXN, um, Dan. I was talking with him and I was like, what, what, uh, you like, you think this looks good? That's interesting. I, it, I think it looks pretty bad. The art style looks fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with the base art, but the actual game it doesn't look good. And I understand that they are going to make a very compelling gameplay. They're going to, I'm sure the gaming Bible is airtight. I'm sure everything feels great. But... I highly, I, I just, I find myself taken aback with what the game looks like. It's just strange. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing the point here. If someone disagrees, please let me know. But I just found myself thinking this was kind of a mess, right? I don't know. Especially when you compare the CGI trailer. Of course, this is why CGI trailers are so, so messy. You know, how pretty the CGI with his, like, flaming hand and how cool it looked. And like he, he made the glyph and you see this where he like put his hands together and like shot like a fire thing. And it was like, oh, that doesn't look good at all. <laughs> like, what's going on? Why doesn't this look more impressive? This is Obsidian. This is a big deal. This is a big studio. I'm worried. I'm worried. Sea of Thieves has a Monkey Island crossover coming July 20th. Very soon. This looks very good. And this is one of those no brainers that I just I'm ashamed I never thought of. I never thought about this crossover ever happening and, and it happened and I'm like, oh, wow, it just makes perfect sense. Of course it does. And I love that uh, it, all the voices are there and and the narrative around it. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm definitely going to try and play this with a couple of friends. I think it's going to be very good. Uh, I remember playing the Pirates of the Caribbean crossover. I'm blinking on what it was called, but that was also very good. And I have full confidence that Rare is going to deliver something very special with this. Speaking of Rare, we did not see the... Um, game the wilds game that they announced so long ago we still don't know what the game even is i don't think they know either i'll be curious to see if that game gets canceled because it's been cooking for quite a while but maybe they're holding on to it for some big reveal who knows i saw people also saying oh this wasn't here this wasn't here it's like well they said they're going to show things that gameplay showcase extended and i'm like are they really going to show something of substance at the gameplay showcase that seems hard to believe why would they do that so I don't I think people are hyping that showcase up a bit more. They did say they are going to show new games, but I highly doubt there's going to be a first party game there that wasn't here. That seems almost disrespectful, right? That you're not shown with the top tier showcase. You're like de degraded to the second showcase like a couple days later. I don't know. That just seems strange to me. Maybe I'm missing the mark, but I don't think I am. 
Of course, Asobo is making this game always strange to see Asobo with the Microsoft Flight Sim, but that is true. And Microsoft Flight Sim 2024, this is a whole new game, and it's going to be adding, like, um, occupations, pretty much. You get to go uh, uh, hot air balloons. You get to use um, the various planes to, like, rescue someone or uh, be a firefighter and drop water, like, flying over um, a wildfire. There's a lot of cool things. Microsoft Flight Sim is something I always appreciate from afar. I I'm just not that guy to play these games, but... I'm always appreciating the game for what it is from afar. I love it. Can't wait to see more about it. Or at least I can't wait to see the cool YouTube videos. How about that? Because I, I will never touch this game, but it's cool. They also announced a Dune crossover that's going to come simultaneously with the new movie, I believe, November 3rd. If you love Dune, there you go. They, they're they liking these kind of crossover things. I, I saw they did something with Top Gun Maverick, of course. I believe that was last year. And a lot of people popped for that. So I'm sure people will be excited to play with that dragonfly ship which looked really cool let's see ninja theory is up next hellblade 2 2024 game pass this is actually something i was very very shocked about although it was a very very cool trailer it was not gameplay this game has been cooking for quite a while and it's strange that they didn't have anything of substance to show especially since they're due out next year so i assume it's not due out until late next year maybe and then we'll see it again next year for a holiday release I'm unsure, but here we go, I, I guess. I, it was a great trailer, but I would like to see what the game looks like. And I know what the game looks like. I played the first one, but it's just strange that we didn't see more of the game. Very strange. Oh, I'm going to mess their name up. I think it's Ryu Yagaka. Let me, let me, I don't want to disrespect the studio. Like a dragon, eternal wealth. That is up next, of course, and I want to make sure I am pronouncing their name right. Hope everyone's doing okay today, by the way. I hope you like the showcase too. I, oh, I guess I don't hope you like the showcase. If you didn't like showcase, I don't really care. But like, I hope I hope you enjoyed your time with it or had a good discussion. If you didn't like it with somebody, oh, let's see, like a dragon. Oh, it's not coming up. Why is it not coming up? I have it written out. Yeah, so it looks like I am pronouncing it correctly. Ryu ga go go tuku go tuku, I believe. Of course, published by Sega as well. And of course, it uh, it is like it is supposed to be like a dragon eight. So, and if I remember right, it was Yakuza in the West, like a dragon. Or sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was Yakuza in the West and like a dragon in the East, and now they're combining the two. I want to say. Could be wrong about that, but I want, I want to say that's true. You're a, if, if you're a fan of this franchise, there you go. Have fun. It was a great trailer, by the way. It's very funny. I like the idea of him coming to the United States. Very cool. Uh, it comes out early 2024. I don't believe I said that. Um, did I say Eternal Wealth? It might be Infinite Wealth, actually. Sorry, I think it's Infinite Wealth. I'm messing this all up. I apologize. I respect your game, I promise. But, um... Happy to see it. Happy to see it come to the. Uh, it seems like people love this franchise. Happy to see everyone happy. But I have nothing to comment on the game. Fallout seventy six Atlantic is getting a another expansion as they continue to refine this experience. It's coming to Game Pass. I know people are excited about Fallout seventy six in general. They didn't have a firm date for the Atlantic pack, but there you go. Enjoy it if you want it. Fallout 76 is something interesting where it had all that flack upon release. It was really set to fail. It did fail, but they've kind of slowly built back up, and I assume they're proud of it, right? Seems like they are. They keep showing it. Path of the Goddess 2024. This is by Capcom. This was a very strange game. I'm curious what the game is. I still don't quite know what you're doing. I was talking with my wife, actually, when we were watching this, and she was like, oh, maybe you're Maybe you're guiding the, 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 maybe the princess or whoever that was behind him, like through this kind of infected area with all the hands and these things. And I was like, maybe, but she, but she then mentioned like, oh, she doesn't follow you. So maybe not. And it looks like you're freeing people from all these things. You know what? I'm sure you at home are curious about it. Let's look it up. See if path of the goddess, see if we can find something about it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I haven't seen anything really describing the game because I would love to actually know a little bit more about it because I have so many questions. Like, what does 
what is it about? What are you doing? How is there? Let's see. Can we go to does it have a Steam page already? No, I don't think so. Wait. Oh, yeah. Many people. Even people said it's like, yeah, it's still a mystery. Some sort of action game seemingly steeped in Japanese mythology. It has monsters, awful love masks. That's all we could say. For sure. Yeah, so not many people know anything about this. Okay, so I wasn't the only one. Here's, here's a little bit from the Xbox blog. Fend off foul creatures and lead the spirit stone maiden on her path. Kunutsu Gami, Path of the Goddess, is a brand new title which upholds Capcom's legacy of original and innovative works. This labor of love follows in the tradition of truly unique titles such as Okami and Shinsekai, Into the Depths. Explore an incredible world in which traditional Japanese aesthetics are brought to stunning life by the power of the RE engine. Enjoy a unique gameplay experience blending action and strategy. Witness an epic clash between spirit realm and mortal man. So we still don't know quite much more about it than that, but we have that, I guess. We'll have to see more. Next up, Forza Motorsport coming out October 10th. Finally has a date. Didn't show much of the game. Other than like, you know, some tuning things. I saw actually a lot of Forza Mortals fans actually not happy. How they showed the game. They didn't really say much. All we really know apparently is we're getting less cars, but the game's going to be prettier. I am not a motorsport guy. I'm more of a Forza Horizon fan. I would love to talk with somebody that's closer to this specific franchise and really discuss what their problems are. Maybe I'll see if I can find someone in the ether to discuss these things. But so far it looks pretty, but... I have to speak from the community eye because I don't really have a opinion on this either way. Seems like they're unhappy about the game. I'll be curious if that shows in either sales or maybe the, they're trying to hide something. I, I don't know what it would be, but if Motorsport nails what Forza Motorsport does, then I don't see why there would be an issue, but we'll have to see. Maybe Gran Turismo raised the bar for some people, although that, of course, had issues at launch, as if, as if everyone can recall with its monetization practices, I believe. So maybe it just raised the bar for other people. Maybe it didn't. Who knows? Elder Scrolls Online. June 20th, Shadow Over Necrom expansion is coming. They continually update this game. I know people love ESO, so I don't really blame them when they have to show this. Of course, you have to show your games as a service. You have to kind of pimp like, hey, remember this is coming and we have an expansion. Get excited. People, are, I'm sure, are excited for this. I'm happy for them. Not my type of game, although my wife is always interested in this one. She's always like, mm, should I play this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know, maybe. No other comments. Throwing more salt in the wound, Overwatch 2 is coming up August 10th. They debuted, um, I guess you could, not really debut, but sort of debut. They showed off uh, certain things that are coming to the game. Flashpoints, Hero Mastery, fire, Firing Range, and the Story Missions. As a reminder, the game directors and all those came out and they said they canceled the greater PVE expansion to the game to just going to be story missions. There's no skill trees like they originally said. None of that. They cut it all out and they're just going to focus on Overwatch 2 and they're going to release these kind of story missions that were meant to be part of the PVE experience of Overwatch 2. Uh, making Overwatch 2 pretty much entirely pointless. They could have just made Overwatch 1 uh, and just stuck with it. So very strange what is happening with this game. I imagine they if they could have said... Never mind to this entire project, they would have. Maybe they made enough money to justify putting this two out and kind of revamping the game, but I think this angered a lot more people than it pleased. Unfortunate, to say the least. I know they have a couple things in that people have been asking for. The firing range is something strange that has uh, they've always wanted, but they've never put in the game. Uh, or sorry, uh, fans have always wanted, but they have never actually put in the game, which is weird that we, we're getting fire ranging now. Like, it's, why did it take so long to put this very simple thing in there? Of course, you have like a little arena in the game that you can practice shooting with, but not the same as those things haven't been updated since the launch of the game, pretty much. And as a reminder, August 10th is when that update goes live, which I believe with the new season, they also announced a new pack. If you join Xbox Game Ultimate or are a current subscriber, when I believe this comes out, you will have a six character pack that you can download that's included with xbox game pass ultimate that will unlock these six characters that have come out since overwatch 2 is launched so you don't have to pay anything also i uh, assumably that will also be in the store for payment although no no word on how much it would be another leak Persona 5 tactics november 17th also coming to game pass looks brilliant i love it saw the trailer when it leaked looks awesome i will love it i love a persona 5 tactics i don't love the chibi art style but 
the tactics gameplay looks very appealing. So I'm happy. I'm definitely playing this day one. Very happy about that. And this year, which is very nice to see. Although they couldn't keep the wrap that long. I am very happy that we are getting this this year. Very cool. Next up, we got a little teaser, but a very beautiful trailer. Nonetheless, Starfield's September 6th Bethesda. Oof. This, I think, was a very, very good trailer. Of course, the showcase ended with a greater Starfield discussion, and we're going to get to that as well. But speaking specifically about this trailer, this trailer is really all I ever needed to really get me excited for the game. As I don't I, once I watched, it, I was like, yeah, I don't need anything else. This is good enough for me. I'm happy for this. Yeah, I don't I don't really have too much to say. I, we'll have a you know, what, I'm going to save my majority of my thoughts for the direct that happened at the end. Ooh, it's thundering out outside my house. Very, very strong thunder. A little worried that my power will go out and I'm going to have to redo the show. But technically, OBS should save it. So maybe we'll, maybe I'll be fine. It, you know, we live on the edge. We'll add that to the product experiment. Let's see if let's see if I disappear and have to redo this. And hopefully I don't because I want this to go up as soon as I'm done recording. this. We'll see. Next up, don't nod. Surprise, surprise uh, show for me because I did not think they'd have something ready. For this year already, but of course they're a big team, so I shouldn't be too shocked. But uh, they have a fall 2022 thing called Jasant. And this was very good looking. I, I love the kind of... um. How do I describe it? It's a very, It has a very specific art style that I'm having trouble... It almost looks like clay-y, but not in a bad way. That sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not like clay. It's... Very blotchy almost with its colors and, and how the game seemingly do it. It, it literally follows a, a, a person climbing a mountain. This is the game. There will be no dialogue. Apparently, it's going to be completely expressional, assumably. Very Journey-like, obviously. Obvious, clear inspiration, I believe. Except you'll be climbing instead of what you do in Journey. No spoilers here. But, but uh, you are also accompanied by a... Uh, uh, piece of water or like a, a piece of water like it like the water is like sentient apparently and it's like attached to you and it talks to you and things it's very cool i'm very this is must play for me i'm very curious what this is gonna be don't nod continually trying to surprise with where they're going right we we saw that they are of course doing the banishers game with the um I want to say, yeah, they're a husband and wife duo, one woman's most spirit, and they're trying to save her throughout their adventures. More action-y. This is, of course, more of a, an experience type of game. Whew. And, and assumably light puzzles as you're climbing. I'm sure you'll have to figure things out. It looks like you had to use, like, the wind to propel yourself. You know, it didn't seem too complicated, but we'll have to see when the game actually launches. Of course, fall of this year. Next up, Still Wakes the Deep. This is the Chinese room. Now, let me double check who is fully making this game, because I saw someone else, but I missed still wakes the deep i missed everyone who was working on the game still wakes the deep still loading still loading come on there we go still wakes the deep let's go to the steam page so developed by the chinese room published by secret mode so i guess i i didn't see anyone else there the steam page is up i want to read a little bit about this because this real goes still wakes the deep is a return to the first person narrative horror genre for the chinese room care of the critically acclaimed games such as amnesia a machine for pigs everybody's gone to the rapture and dear esther i forgot they made everybody's gone to the rapture completely forgot about that i didn't play that game um because it was uh i remember trying it and it was a puzzle game and i immediately turned off i was like eh, i'm good no thanks you are an offshore oil rig worker fighting for his life through a vicious storm, perilous surroundings, and the dark, freezing North Sea waters. All lines of communication have been severed. All exits are gone. All that remains is to face unknowable horror that comes aboard. Whew. I won't read the rest, just in case you would like to find more yourself. Love it. Immediately perked me up as soon as I saw this. Very fun horror game. First person kind of it didn't say action horror so it might just straight up be like a horror game with like light action elements oh i love the setting on this oil rig in the middle of nowhere it's such a great idea i'm sure it's been used before and i just don't know about it because i'm not very into like you know movies and these things but like such a great idea to have a horror film similar to like of course aliens was a good because you were just in the middle of space no one could hear you scream of course and uh, if you're on an oil rig in the middle of the ocean also no one will hear you scream so Great, great idea. Very excited to play this game. No date. 
No, no, sorry. It was early 2024. It was early 2024. I had it one page below where I could see. Very excited. Dungeons of Hindenburg. This is coming 2024. I wanted to read a little bit about this as well. Dungeons of Hindenburg. Let's learn a little bit about this together, huh? Action adventure RPG set around a new tourist hotspot in idyllic Australian uh, Austrian Alps. Very cool. So, armed with a sword and a tourist guide, explore the beautiful alpine village of Hintenburg and uncover the magic hidden within its dungeons. Master magic, saw puzzles, slay monsters, all this and more await you in Hintenburg. This, yeah, this this looks exactly as described. It looks very cool. I love the art style. Almost cartoonish, kind of like Cartoon Network anime. Not, not anime, but like almost Adventure Time-like sort of art style. Very fun. Cannot wait to play this game. A lot of the pictures are funny because because it's just her standing in various things, not really doing anything. So the pictures don't really tell you anything else. But it looks like you're exploring the Alps. Oh, it looks like you are grinding on some sort of railing. But it looks like you're also floating on it. I don't know. Very strange game. I cannot wait for this. This is coming 2024, developed by Microbird Games and published by Curve Games. Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty comes up. This is coming September 26th. So you guys know my feelings on Cyberpunk. This is something, this is the game I waited a, almost a year and a half, I think a year and a half to actually play. I'd have to check my achievements to ensure my timing is correct on that. But, oh boy, this looked great. If you remember my original thoughts on when I played the game, it was actually very, very good. It was actually a great game, which makes what happened to it even sadder. There was a great game hidden in all of that baggage, all of that destructive bugs that completely wiped the game for most people. I remember the bug, uh, not even bug, I guess it was intended, I'm not really sure, to save on like computing space. Like if you walked forward and turned around, people would disappear. Or, or no, you might have to do a shoot in the air. And as long as you, and if you turned around fast enough, people would disappear in these things. It, it was a mess. Of course, the story of the game is different a year and a half later. There are, I and I actually had a friend reach out to me and ask like, hey, I'm actually thinking about picking up Cyberpunk. And I was like, well, you know, do you want my advice? And I pretty much gave him this huge spiel of like, you know, I played it about a year and a half. It was also great, but I had I still had some bugs. I, I will never forget the bug of uh, every now and then. I think it happened about six to eight ish times for me. Uh, a car would just sink into the earth every now and then it would sink into the earth, go back up and, you know, nothing happened. One time, one thing was driving. It sunk like in like head first went in the ground and then i guess everything clipped back in and it shot up into the air very hilarious it shouldn't happen but at least it was funny <laughs> but so that was one plus about the bug i also had one game banking bug that a suitcase duplicated in the doorway and i had to spend like 10 minutes trying to jump over it because i had no save and i was like and i was like two three hours into the game and i didn't want to restart so i sat there for almost 10 minutes like slowly trying to jump over like crouch and jump over and eventually i got it by like grace of god by probably like a single pixel i was able to jump over that thing all that being said this is a great game as long as they didn't mess anything up phantom livery should be a great add-on experience to cyberpunk 27 i want to highlight that if they didn't mess anything up let's not forget what happened with this game let's not forget what cg project red did I don't blame you if you're at home sitting there and like, I'm never giving them another cent of my dollar if you were someone that was burned on this game. That's your conviction. Say, hey, don't settle. Don't get this. I was lucky enough that my uh, brother got it. We uh, share games and I played it like a year and a half later. All, all good. All well was fine. Uh, I, I didn't feel burned is I guess what I'm trying to say. But I would completely understand if you saw this DLC and you're like, I don't really care. I think it looks great. Can't wait for it. City Skylines 2, October 24th. This is a very close game uh, to launch. And when I saw it, I was like, is this SimCity? I think I couldn't have been the only one that thought this because it, it very much looked like SimCity. Looked like a return to SimCity. And then I slowly realized, like, wait, no, SimCity, it's probably not SimCity. It's probably City Skylines. And I was right. It was I was I said that right before the end of the trailer. I was like, this is probably the sequel to City Skylines. Because like, I think they actually, I want to say they already announced that this game was coming. But we never, we didn't see much about it. I, I can't quite remember the the story behind this game. But 
easily to say this looks great. I am not the guy that's going to sit there and make these giant cities and power them and all these things. I'm much more of a Civ Six guy. And I think that's like as far as I would go and how granular that game gets. That's that's like pushing me to my limits. And I only like Civ Six because of, of the type of game. It's almost like a perfect game for me. Or I can like like pretend to be civilization. It's very cool. That's aside from the point. City Skylines 2 looks great. I remember all the time. So I remember saying that game all the time when I was working at GameStop. Um, let's grab the dev because I missed it. City Skylines 2. What makes you? What make what makes you? See this guy this too. Developed by Colossal Order Ltd. and Paradox Interactive. And it's as described. If you saw the 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 trailer, I mean, it, you're making cities. Be excited if that's that's for you. Something that wasn't leaked that was also from Atlas. This is Studio Zero. They're making Metaphor Refantizio, I believe is how you pronounce this. Coming 2024, it's an Atlas game. Looks like an Atlas game. The art style looks so great. It has that that Atlas charm. I would call, I would call it. It looks it, that anime esque art style that just looks so charming to me. I cannot wait to get hands on this. I'm very very excited for this next year sometime. This is day one buy, no questions asked. I'm a Persona fan. I'm going wherever you point me, Atlas. I'm gonna, I'm at least try it. So, I'll see you then. Metaphor Refantizio. This is a, a in this next studio I think to, to, is underrated. They made Banner Saga trilogy. It's stoic. This is a co-op game called Towerborn 2024. Very clearly Castle Crashers, old arcade inspired type game where you're like co-oping together with other people playing like this side scrolling beat 'em up RPG. It kind of looks like is maybe what I call it, uh, side scrolling beat 'em up RPG. You can go up to four player co-op and just run around on this side scrolling it looks great i don't know if this will keep me it like i said it looks great but i i don't i don't know if if this is something for me specifically i did like castle crackers okay sorry i did like castle crashes back in the day but i can't really i don't really find myself looking for that gameplay but maybe this is something me and my brother or, or one of my siblings or something will will pick up and try out i'm not really sure i'm on the fence what do you guys think at home let me know because, I don't know, I'm on the fence. Now, next, this next one is going to be my game of show. I'm going to take a classic sip. It was a Powerade. So give me a second. I'm going to take a sip. I want you to also, at home, take a sip of something. Maybe there's something near you, some sort of alcohol beverage. Maybe you're driving with an open container breaking multiple laws in the USA. If you are, maybe don't take the sip, though, if, if you are doing that. But if you have, like, some sort of drink at home, that you're enjoying while you're listening to the podcast. Take a sip of it while I take my sip. Oh, there we go. Much needed. Um, threat, thrust, uh, thrust, Jesus. Thirst quencher, right? Next up, uh, I think this might be my game of the show. I don't know. There's five of them, I would say. This is one of them, at least. Clockwork revolution we see what in exile has been working on this whole time now if you don't remember who in exile has been or has worked on previously let's look up in exile's games because so i don't want to make any errors here in exile game boom these are the people who made wasteland that's right ah, wasteland they have such a strange strange um Oh, they made Bard's Tale trilogy and and wow they yeah lots of Bard's Tale lots of Wastelands I hear that the Wasteland uh, series of games are very good not a big Wasteland guy I, it wasn't really for me just seeing the gameplay I was like eh, no thanks which is funny is I I love Banner Saga which was from Stoic which a game everyone should try if they're into strategy so it's funny they have kind of similar gameplay stylings not too similar but I loved Banner Saga it was a oh my god I'm completely off the rails but you know we're having a fun time banner saga was a trilogy of games where you you were it was like a top-down strategy game similar to something like um god what was that game called it was a ps4 game it was very final fantasy tactics like this is also final fantasy tactics like but if it's like with the mass effect choices so there's a it's funny how important the first game is to affecting the other two because there's a may I mean a major thing I, I hate that no one talks about these three games because I really do think they are fantastic, fantastic games. It's literally called the Banner Saga trilogy. I'm sure you can get them for 
dollars now. I'm sure they're fully on sale at some random time. You will probably get the trilogy for maybe ten bucks, best ten bucks you ever spent. Top down, very similar to like Final Fantasy Tactics ish. Sort of, you're moving square by square using tactics to your advantage. There's multiple players with like different skill sets. You're fighting like against the end of the world. Blah, blah, you know, I'm, I'm not spoiling the game here, but everyone give that a shot. If you have any loving of, of the tactics games or anything, those three games are so underrated. I hear no one ever talking about them ever. And that always brings me sadness. Sit down. You go play Banner Saga. We have a little while before a bunch of games come out. It, maybe enjoy that over your summer. Who knows? We we're talking about a clockwork <laughs> revolution and F by NX out my game of the show. Uh, I want ever, I, or at least I hope everyone at home saw the clear, clear, clear exper, uh, inspiration behind this game. Bioshock Infinite was all over this game. This might be like a percent more and it'd be a ripoff. <laughs> like this was Bioshock Infinite to the T. It's funny how many things it rips off of Bioshock Infinite if you fully played Bioshock Infinite. I say rips off. That's a that's maybe a bit too harsh. I, I don't mean it in a literal way of like, you know, they, they mean some sort of harm, but it's surprising how similar the game is, I guess I'll say, in a nicer way. Oof, big old flash of lightning just then. Uh, it, it makes what I say much more dramatic at home. I wish I could pick up the thunder, so like every now and then you'd hear just... Oh. But... Clockwork Revolution looks great. I love the... It looks like you're starting a revolution, but maybe you, you mess up the revolution, so like you go forward in time, realize you messed up, maybe you have to go back in time fix your issue, see if you could do something else. Maybe you're going back again and trying to fix it. I'm not sure, but it looks so, so good. Very excited for these games. In Exile doing something very different, and I'm very excited. Very excited. Another, finally, we're seeing the fruits of all of these purchases, all of these acquisitions come to fruition. Thank you. Thank the heavens, I guess. I don't know. Whatever religion you follow, thank them. This is the end of the show, pretty much. Next up, we have the Black Series S, one terabyte version, back in black. It's going to be three forty nine, dollars not bad price. Coming out September 1st, the pre-orders are live, apparently. Cool. You get more storage options. It was always sad that they released it at 512 gigabytes, the original Series S, which means you're not getting that. You're getting like 450 400 which is nothing. If you're playing Call of Duty, that's that's half your storage, I think. <laughs> Which is, I mean, <laughs> hilarious. But uh, I'm happy to see there's more storage. It's only fifty bucks more. So I mean, that's I mean that's not bad at all. And also, uh, I don't know if uh, everyone saw it home, but we reported on it a few times. So just in case you missed it, I believe Western Digital and Seagate are uh, starting to lower the price. Western Digital, of course, is the new memory card for the Series S and X model. They uh, they do use proprietary memory, which sucks. You have to buy one of those two options. So there's a Western Digital one that's much cheaper than the Seagate one. I'm sure the Seagate one will also be lowering price soon as well. But it's, I'm happy to see more storage options coming out for the Series S because I know a lot of people out there are hurting for the, for the memory and you don't want to... What's funny is you could, you could either buy a... So for the same price, you can either buy a Series S or a one terabyte memory card for your Series X, which is hilarious. Because the Series X, like one terabyte, I believe was like 250 or three, 230 which a couple dollars more, you got a system. So it's hilarious how expensive it was. So... Glad we're getting more storage. Glad we're getting more storage options as well for people out there who are going to, I'm sure, is hoarding for space. That's the end of the showcase. This is the start of the Starfield so, uh, Direct. Before we get into that, I want to quickly go over my full thoughts of the Direct because I feel like these are two separate things. I feel like we have, of course, the Xbox Showcase Direct and the Starfield Direct. Let's. I want to talk about the the showcase direct, and then we'll move on to breaking down the Starfield one, and then grading that as well. Not really grading it. I'm just giving you my thoughts. So, closing thoughts on the showcase. <sighs> Again, if we're grading this in a vacuum, and we're really discussing was this showcase very good, and we're not letting past mistakes or a legacy of frankly failures although that sounds extreme this is a, and this is a near perfect showcase like if what what do you want you know this kind of pretty much fills out every avenue it was maybe missing an animal crossing game or something i like at, at this, they pretty much hit every mark it was a very good pace had a lot of games for her for being only an hour i believe 
pretty much an hour perfectly or maybe an hour and a few minutes over. Great messaging, great marketing. I loved it. I know this is pretty much all just a series of commercials, but no one else has these things. So I'm always happy when we get these things. I thought it was very, very good. I think this is the best showcase they've ever put out. The one drawback, if we now open up the criticism to the greater world of gaming, we, as Xbox fans, yet again find ourselves that next year will be good. <laughs> Which is just hilarious, because we've been saying that for 10 years almost, or pretty much a decade. I think that's everything I will bore you with, with my thoughts of the Xbox showcase. That was my full-on thoughts. I, I'm, I'm sitting here contemplating that if i really wanted to say anything else i don't know it was great oh and i wanted to tell you my games of the show i actually tweeted them out it was um clockwork revolution it was going to be starfield of course it was also persona 5 tactics persona 4 reloaded uh can you tell me i'm a persona fan and hellblade 2 that was just my five of the show um and just to just to put it back out there let me know what you thought about avowed i just think it just didn't look next gen so what so what i mean i'm not saying it's going to be a bad game but let's have some criticism you know just a little bit of criticism right it, it, i know we love obsidian i know we cherish them i know we're very happy we still have them making games and these things but you know let's let's get a little little criticism in there please like let's let's really be like hey no this looks great but why does it look why does it not look like an Xbox Series S and X game? I don't know how anyone can look at me and say it does. It doesn't. But maybe it will take over what it lacks in fidelity in gameplay. That's possible. Look at Zelda. Although Zelda commits to an art style, which I would argue is different. Zelda and <laughs> Avowed are two very, very different products. So they commit to a very specific art style and they actually don't, at least in my opinion, suffer in any way. Which is funny because I used to be frame frame rates or bust kind of guy. I actually uh, replied to a tweet something about this that that uh, people seemingly upset about you know Starfield not being sixty and these things and all these people saying well I believe the Legend of Zelda I didn't really care I'm kind of with everyone there Legend of Zelda was a fantastic game just because it's thirty frames per second doesn't make just be sorry. Oh, you know what? This is actually better. And I actually made a case for this on a past show. Frames does not sell games. There's no study that says anyone really cares about these things. This is really only for the personal person. If you, if this is a make or break thing, this is a make or break thing. I'm not here to, to change your mind. I'm here to give you my perspective and, and my knowledge on this specific point of view. But I did remember saying this specific words. Frames do not sell games, right? These frames are not selling games. There's no data out there. There's actually data to the contrary that most people don't even care about frames. They actually more care about more fidelity than frames, which is shocking to me. I'm, I'm right there with you. That That is a weird thing that if, if you look at a game, you're like, you know what? I want to play at 30 frames, but I want it in 4K. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Uh, no, no, no. no. I, I want it at 60 and I'll take whatever resolution. I really don't care as long as it runs. At a steady 60. I don't want dips. I had actually, at some point, had to turn Jedi uh, uh, Fallen Survivor. No, uh, Jedi Survivor down um, to a locked 30 uh, right near the end of the game because I was starting to get sick at how constant the frame drops were in the main area of the game. So, you know, I'm not sitting here pretending like I'm in this, not in a glass house. I'm casting stones around a glass house, kind of. But... I want to say that you can't blame devs for not really caring about it because no one seems to care, the general audience at least. So hardcore gamers, I'm with you. We do care. If a Twitch shooter comes out and it's not 60, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm like, whoa, what's going on? You know, something like Borderlands, that's going to be weird because it's all about the gameplay. Starfield probably going to feel fine in 30 frames because of all the things you could do in third person and all these things. First person, it might feel a little wonky, so I'm probably never going to switch to first person. But third person might make it feel a bit better. Again, at Zelda, when it when it stutters, I feel it hard. But in the general gameplay, I don't really care. I'm having a great time. I'm doing these dungeons. The gameplay is so solid. The story is fun. Again, and everyone knows listening to this, 
I, you know I'm not the star. I'm, you know I'm not the Breath of the Wild guy. Miss me with the fanboyism. I am not a Nintendo fanboy, right? You know that. I know that. I was I was the only one shouting from the rafters that Breath of the Wild was overrated. This is finally the Zelda game that isn't overrated. This is actually probably worth the hype that everyone's generating for it. I'm 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 the first time this is like on your side because I was always a no. This isn't as good as Link to the Past. Breath of the Wild is now we're not even touching Link to the Past. So let's just get that straight. But I'm I'm derailing the conversation. Anyways. Frames doesn't win games. I don't blame them for not caring. If they have to sacrifice frames for a vision, then you make sure the, the vision succeeds the frame rate. The frame rate void, right? Think about it like this. They now have to prove more to you why you should enjoy the game if you care about 60 frames, right? So go, go to it at that point of view. Say like, hey, you know, I wanted 60 frames. So give me a reason why there wasn't there. And maybe I'm happy. Maybe that reason could be the gunplay feels this this way, or maybe the skill points, you know, were were like the, the way you could play the skill tree was, or maybe the ship combat is like the justifying factor. Remember, if you're on PC, play some PC unlock frame rate. You're boom. If you have a good rig, you can probably go above sixty. And then that's the end of discussion. That you you know that's never really a problem. If you're on Xbox Series X, I understand the plight. I wish it was sixty frames as well. But this is the game that I'm not going to die in the hill that it should be 60 frames. You can pick up a box and move it and, and like like you can pick up pretty much everything in the world. So I'm not, I'm not just going to be out here being like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's 60 frames. They told us it was not 60 frames a year ago if you're paying attention pretty much. So let's let's probably move on from this discussion. Anything else I want to cover? I pretty much told you. Yeah, I told me give me a show. Talked about that. I do wish we saw more of Fable. Again, I, I think this is very really good. Was a little heavy on the CGI. I know none of it's CGI. It's in-game uh, engine. I know it's not the same thing, but it, it does still it still lacks core gameplay, which I want gameplay. You don't get to skirt around where it's like, well, it's technically an engine. I'm like, well, what? I want to see the gameplay. I understand you can't. It's it's you're busy. These things keep working on the games if it's going to mess up some sort of schedule that you have. But it still was a little light on the gameplay from the first party. Let's hope Fable is great. That's all I want. <laughs> Please. Before we move on to the Starfield Direct, again, I'm directing us. We have two kind of really cool um, pictures, images, I guess. And I wanted to read them. So if we remember, Xbox had a cheeky chart when PlayStation released their showcase. Like, this is all the games coming to Xbox, right? It was like, what a fine group or something. Someone actually did the same thing. It wasn't PlayStation. It was like a fan made these a same collage with all the games that are coming to PlayStation. So I want to read them just in case you are at home curious if what if some game is coming to PlayStation. So they are and none of them are really surprising. I'd say Star Wars Outlaws, Persona 3 Reloaded, Pers Persona 3 Re Reload. Sorry, 33 Immortals, Payday 3, uh, the Like a Dragon 8. Infinite Wealth, um, let's see, Necrom, Expansion for Elder Scrolls Online, uh, Cyberpunk Fam Phantom Liberty, Jacent, Persona 5 Tactics, Metaphor, Still Wakes the Deep, and what is that game? Oh, that's the Capcom game, the, um, I forgot the name of it, what was it? Let me, let me find the Capcom game's name. Uh, da -da 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 -da. sorry, I, I, it's, it's gonna bother me, so I have to find it. Path of the Goddess, sorry, I'm sure you were screaming that at home. So that's everything coming to PlayStation, if you're worried. And this is everything coming to day one on Game Pass, almost every game. So this is everything coming day one Game Pass. This was tweeted out by actually Xbox. Starfield, Forza Motorsport, Sinua Saga's Hellblade 2, Fable, Avowed, Clockwork Revolution, uh, Path of the Goddess, South of Midnight, Towerborn, Payday 3, 33 Immortals, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, City Skylines 2, Persona 3 Reload, Persona 5 Tactics, Still Wakes the Deep, Dungeons of Hintonburg, Jacent. Pretty much every single game. <laughs> Except, um, of course, uh, Cyberpunk. The expansion. So there's a few games that are missing. But almost everything. And that is everything covering the regular Xbox showcase. Let's move on to the Starfield Direct. I'm not going to stay on this too long because... I don't have too too much to say as it was really just describing the game and it was so dense. I can't sit here and recount to you every single thing that they 
talked about the game is immensely huge and i honestly don't think it would make good content if i really sat here and really just shot it from a press release or something how incredible the game is with all these press release words just going to give you my basic thoughts so this is everything i wrote down discuss basic gameplay discuss you know hey you can it's just like fallout you want to shoot this gun you shoot this gun you want to go punch a guy you can you want to use katanas or something go ahead boom you can kill these guys if you are familiar with any elder scrolls fallout type mechanics to combat to the gameplay style, you're not going to be shocked about anything here. They have a similar kind of trait system with the that in uh, background systems as well. Since we're sticking on gameplay, I'm skipping around a little bit here. You can use traits. There are three. You can have three traits. It's optional, and they have a plus and a minus. Some are really funny. So there's one where it's like hero worshiper. This is one of the demo. You, I think you. I think you're like slightly stronger or something. I, I forget the bonus. I'm sorry, but pretty much the, you're like stronger in one aspect, but you have a guy running around bothering you about how great you are. And like, he finds you at random spots, I believe like throughout the game. Sounds very funny, very cute. Uh, and, and they kind of hinted that you could kill him if you wanted to. So like, you can get rid of the drawbacks. One of them was funny. It was family man. I believe you have to take care of your parents, like through payments. So like, I assume like every couple of time periods, like you'll lose money. But you, but uh, so like, and and but there's a bonus. I'm not remembering all the. I remember the drawbacks more than the bonuses. But uh, but that, but you can visit your parents. You can talk to them, and they're like, they're like, oh, look who's here. It's very, it's very funny when he walks in the door, and like the mom's like, oh, we have a visitor. Like, very strange, very, very Bethesda. Uh, and uh, very cool with the straights. Background, you can have like, I think one. Oh, they demoed like being a chef, so like you could. Uh, people comment on you being a chef. You're like, oh yeah, we know. We we're wondering why you're here, and not like at some five star restaurant. And one was, um, you could be a monster hunter person. So like, you can you can that unlocks exclusive dialogue with other players. Again, you know, you, you've all, we've all seen this in the Fallout Four Elder Scrolls games. Uh, let's see. Um, companions. The companions look like companions. They're very cool. Seem to be. All the up and up. We'll have to see more because they didn't really demo too too much about the companions. We do have the robot character. That's the first companion they actually ever showed, I believe. You can customize a little robot guy. You can like give him a nose, apparently, or, or like something that looks like a nose to make him more human in these things. Very fun. Character creator seems very deep. They scanned a bunch of faces of very different people to try and catch many subtleties. Uh, the same thing that makes the NPCs in the world are in the character creator so you could so you could technically look like an NPC, although statistical wise i'm sure it, it'll be very rare for that to happen but that it could happen which is kind of funny I, I like that there's so much you could do with the character creator specifically there was a lot of uh the character creations uh, tools that i was like oh that's kind of cool like you can really get nitty-gritty just like in the follow games you know I, i'm saying that a lot but you know just like the other games it's here too uh exploration they detailed this they showed off like oh you know you start off with a, I'm assuming a rinky dink ship, you know, you can travel to this planet, but not this planet because you don't have enough fuel. So you have to like refuel at this planet, then get to that one. Or you can only get so far because you don't have like a certain thing, which led them into like how ship customization, how you improve it in these things. And you can get as granular as you want with the ship customization. You can add on like specific things to what to to make it look a certain way. You can add on like, oh, I want more uh crewmates so i add on like in a storage for crew people and i can get more crew members you can have uh you can upgrade your ship generator so you can go farther or like your fuel supply uh you can make it look a certain way they made a joke that like one of the people made theirs look like a platypus and, or someone made like a mech so you can get very creative with with the sh how you make the ships in these games very cool let's see here uh we can talk to x ship combat yeah, yeah. ship combat and looting i wrote this down the combat looks sick. Looks like pretty simple. Doesn't look too complicated. You shoot at a guy until they're dead, and then you can either blow them up, or if you can disable them, you can board them. I am going to be the biggest ship pirate ever in this game. I'm going to be constantly boring. You can steal the ship, and it's added to your fleet. I'm assuming you can then break it down for salvage or money. I, <laughs> I am going to be Blackbeard out there. It's just stealing, pillaging, burning down just ruining people's lives out there gonna be very 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 excited uh to just be this like a horrid guy a terrible 
I'm going to be a pirate. Hopefully people remember me fondly, similar to how a lot of people remember pirates. They were hor horrible people, but maybe I'll be remembered fondly because I will be a giant ship pirate. Constantly pillaging. Constantly. Just constantly. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, they showed off the controller and the headset that leaked, but, you know, we, we saw it for sure. The controller looks it looks incredible. Look, I mean, it looks very pretty. If you want that aesthetic i do not blame you it is very 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 attractive controller it has clear triggers you kidding me you kidding me with the clear triggers the headset was also shown that has a clear mic i believe still that starfield rainbow-esque design uh, they mapped the controller around the buttons in your cockpit like how like how the uh, gray markers on it and stuff like what it says great great stuff love it can't wait it's not an elite controller so you know i can only get so excited but Still cool, nonetheless. And I'll wrap my uh, thoughts around Starfield being it looks great. Uh, it's confirmed that it's 30 frames. We all knew that. Uh, if you were shocked by that, I don't know what to tell you. They told you. They just didn't tell you. But it, I do I will do say it was a little scummy to not say it during the direct. I understand why you didn't because you wanted pre-orders. <laughs> I know why you didn't, but... It's still a little weird where it's like, eh, you should have said it, but I mean, I, I, you should you should have guessed. If you listened to this show, you should have known. Now, if you listened to other shows, you wouldn't have known. A lot of people copium out there saying this was going to be 60 frames. A lot of my friends, I, I don't know how to explain this. They told you it would be 60. The moment Redfall said it was 30 frames, I was out here saying, that means Starfield is... Look where we are. I'll take my victory lap now. I'm not going to take a victory lap. I'm just joking. It didn't take a mad scientist to, to really see that. I don't think I am all that smart being able to see that there. But that's my thoughts on the Starfield Direct. Thank you so much for listening. That's my thoughts on the whole showcase in general. It was a great showcase. I think this was very, very strong. My only downside is it's another year of waiting. Maybe Starfield will be something very, very special. I mean, if it if it lives up with what it showed, it will be. But that's if. We don't know. Because we haven't played it yet. But of course, it's going to be so long till we can play it. So until then, remember, you can stick with me as I traverse the ever-expanding world of games coverage. Remember to support me, patreon.com slash easyachievers. You can support me there. Uh, financially if you wish remember there is a revitalization coming very soon i will start posting exclusive content on there of course just by me and it's gonna be just me it'll be very it'll be even more personal i think than the regular shows which i'm very excited about uh, aside from that that's all i have for you uh today i was about to say this week i of course have more for you to show you can check out the previous video breaking down summer games fest and you can of course check this video out i will have timestamps for jesus i'm i'm losing it I need to go. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the show. Until next time, go Chief.